Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at solving simultaneous equations graphically. Now the question that you can see on the screen is the type of question that we're going to build up to. We're going to have a look at finding estimates to these sorts of equations where we have a quadratic and a linear equation to take into account. So as I said, this is the type of question we're going to look at solving. We're going to kind of break this down and start from some of the what I would call slightly easier questions. But um, for this particular topic, there are a couple of other topics that you need to know. So you need to know how to draw linear equations or draw straight line graphs. And again, I'll link that in the description. And you do need to have some idea about how to rearrange equations. Though I am sure if you are looking at solving um, simultaneous equations, then obviously you are already going to have some knowledge of rearranging an equation. So there we go. That's what we're going to be looking at. And with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to show you this very quickly from YouTube Studio. Now, what I noticed was that a lot of people are obviously subscribing to the channel, a lot of new people were joining and watching the videos, but then I saw on my YouTube Studio here that only 20.7% of those people are actually subscribed. So if you are one of the people that's not subscribed, please do think about subscribing to the channel. It massively helps me, it massively helps the channel, and obviously with lots of new content coming out, I do, do not want you to miss anything. So please do subscribe, please stay subscribed, it really does help me out. And I really Really, really appreciate that. So anyway, let's get started. So when it comes to solving simultaneous equations graphically, we need to understand what we're actually looking to solve. And these first few questions really highlight that and just show how easy a question like this one on the screen can actually be. Now it says here, use the graphs to solve the simultaneous equations, and then it gives us our two equations just here. Now if you look next to the graph, those equations are also labeled. So obviously that first equation we can see is just here, and the second equation we can see is labeled just down there. And when we are solving simultaneous equations graphically, all we're actually looking to do is find the points at which the, in, they intersect. Now I say points there because obviously if it's two straight lines, they're only going to intersect at one point. But if there is a quadratic or maybe even a circle involved, or maybe even a cubic graph, then they are going to intersect at multiple points. Now this is two straight lines, so they actually only intersect at the one point. And we can see that, and I can put a little cross on it, on the graph just there. So in order to find the solutions to this equation, all we need to do is write down what the x and y coordinate is at that point. And hopefully you can see the x coordinate, if we trace our finger down, is minus 2. So I could say x equals minus 2. And I would then find the y coordinate as well, which we can see on the y axis just there is 4. So I would say y equals 4. And that would be my solutions. That was all, I, all I'd have to say is I'd just have to say x equals minus 2 and y equals 4. Again, if it asks for the coordinates, you could write that as a coordinate as well. This one doesn't, but you could write it if it asks for the coordinate. You could say, okay, it's minus 2 and 4. So very quickly, before you have a very quick go at a couple of these questions, I'm just going to show you one more. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so I thought I'd show you this one here just because if you have a look, the equations in this question look horrendous. Okay, now they're not actually, I mean, we wouldn't want to draw these particularly, but if you have a look at them, we've got the first equation given to us there, which is labelled on the graph, and the second equation, and let's do this in a different colour this time, is given to us here, and again, that's labelled on the graph. So although this looks really nasty, it isn't actually that bad. It's literally just finding the points at which they intersect, which as we can see, is right there. Now this one is a little bit, you know, not so nice as the last question because if you already, you can probably already see that that intersection point where they cross over is not on a whole coordinate. So we are going to have to read this as accurately as we can. So I'm going to get rid of that cross because I want to read this really accurately. So if I get, well obviously the best way to do this would be to get a ruler and a pencil and you want to draw a nice straight line up from the point so you can really nicely read that x coordinate. Now 2.5 is in the middle, and it's in the middle of that, so that would be 2.25 or two and a quarter. So straight away, I'd write down x equals 2.25. On to the next one, I need to find the y coordinate. So again, get your ruler, get your pencil, trace it across really nice and carefully, and read that number very carefully. Now it doesn't look like I have done that perfectly. I'm just trying to have another little look. Yeah, it looks like I've done that okay. 
Um, but you could probably do with just getting rid of it and just making sure it's absolutely perfect. It just look, look, does look like on my graph it is slightly below halfway. So it's quite difficult to tell. You could probably make the argument that it goes across here. But remember with a question like this, you are just trying to get it as accurate as you possibly can, particularly if this is on an exam paper and the graph is relatively small. Sometimes it's difficult to read it perfectly. So based on where I put it there, my minus 1.5 would be in the middle just there, and it's in the middle of those two. So we could probably make a fair a fair estimate here to say that it is negative 1 point a quarter, 1.25. So I could say y equals minus 1.25 or you could probably make the argument here that it's negative 1.3. Again, if I was to go back and trace it a little bit different with my ruler, if I could put a ruler on the screen, it does also look like actually it goes along this line just here and we get negative 1.3. So again, just depending on how accurate we are there and how small the graph is and how well we can see it, we might just actually say that that's negative 1.3. Okay, but obviously quite difficult to see on the screen, so we're not going to stress about that too much. Obviously, you just need to do it as accurately as you can, particularly when this is on an exam paper. Okay, let's have a look at two quick questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions on the screen, so you don't need to write these down, you don't need to draw them. All you need to do is pause the video, trace your finger to the coordinates, write down the X and Y, and just make sure you're perfectly happy with this before we move on. Okay, so do that now. Right, so looking at the coordinates for the first question over here, we have x equals 2 and we have y equals 4. Hopefully nice and easy. Hopefully you're looking at these questions and thinking, this is a lot easier than I thought it was. So good. That's just giving you an idea of obviously how easy this can be to find those solutions. On to the next one. We've obviously got that in the negative part on the x-axis. So x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to 1. And there we go, there's your two solutions for these. Now to be fair, when we move on to quadratics and when we move on to some of these other questions, they are a lot more difficult than these ones. So these were just some nice ones to get you started. But the important part here is to know when we are looking at solving simultaneous equations graphically, we are looking for those points of intersection. And that's really what I wanted you to gather from this particular task. So right, let's have a look at some slightly harder ones. Okay, so moving on to a question where we have a quadratic. Now there are two different types of questions that we could have here, so we're going to look at this one first. I'm just going to explain how you would approach this. We're not going to practice one of these, but then we're going to have a look at a slightly different one and give you a practice question on that. So this question here, it's important to read all the words here, it says the graph of y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2 is drawn on the grid. And as you can see that that is labelled down here as well. It says on the grid draw the graph of y equals 4 minus 2x and use this to estimate the solutions to the simultaneous equations and then it gives us y equals 4 minus 2x and the one that's drawn for us. So the big important thing here is where it says estimate. So it says use this to estimate the solutions. So what that says to me is that it's not going to perfectly go through a whole number coordinate. And we're going to have to obviously just give a bit of our best guess as to where it actually intersects with this quadratic. So the first thing we actually need to do is draw the graph that we've been asked to draw. It says draw this graph. Here we go. So this is why I said at the start of the video, you do need to know how to draw linear graphs or straight line graphs. And again, I'm going to link that in the description just in case you're not so sure. So for this particular question here, we just want to draw a little table or whatever method you prefer for drawing a straight line graph. And we're just going to plot it on our grid. So obviously we've got some x coordinates that we can plug in and we know how to find the y coordinates. So if we just go for, and you could start with negative one if you want. Uh, in fact, yeah, let's start with negative one. So negative one, zero, one, two, three. You could go further than that if you want, but once we've got a few, we can extend the line using a ruler. So if we draw our numbers in here, we've got y is equal to four take away two x. So two lots of minus one is uh, minus 2 and we're going to take away minus 2 from 4 which adds 2 so y would equal 6. 4 take away 2 lots of 0 it's going to stay as 4 and then 4 take away 2 lots of 1 will equal 2 and as you can see there's a pattern forming it goes down in 2's so that's going to be 6, 4, 2 and then 0 and then negative 2 and it's going to carry on just like that. So if we plot these coordinates negative 1, 6 We've got 0 and 4, we've got 1 and 2, uh, 2 and 0, and we've got 3 and negative 2, which just about fits. There we go. So it doesn't actually matter that much that I didn't go any further. 
Now, this is where we need to obviously draw a straight line through this. Uh, I'm not going to be able to draw a straight line perfectly here, but I'm going to do my absolute best to draw it as straight as I can. It always tends to go wobbly when I do it on here, but there we go. I'll draw it as best I can. Okay, so for the purpose of this, obviously you need to use a ruler and a pencil uh, in order to draw that line. But now we can actually go about finding the solutions or estimates to the solutions. So where they intersect, we've got one there. I'm going to draw this in the purple colour and we've got one down there. And we just need to read them as best we can. So for the solution just here, we've got x is going to equal. Let's have a look again, trace your finger down, read it very carefully. I'm going to go as down as best I can, but obviously you're going to want to use a ruler. And that looks like minus 0.7 or potentially, potentially minus 0.6. Okay, it looks more like minus 0.6. Again, you need to do that really nice and perfectly when you do it and not worry too much about the fact if mine is just slightly off on the screen and then our y coordinate we're going to read off the y axis so going across and there we go that looks like let's just have a look so that's 5.2 okay be very very careful of the axes there because that y axis goes up in twos so just need to be very careful halfway there is five every little square is 0.2 so we get y equals 5.2 so that's our first set of coordinates there. So let's just highlight those so we can see them nice and clearly. And that is one set of solutions. Again, it doesn't say to give the coordinates, so we do write x equals and y equals. On to this one just over here. Reading that again very carefully, I'm going to go along from x. There we go, I'm going to do it really quick. There we go. And that is minus 1.2 by the looks of it on my graph. There we go, so that is x equals minus 1.2 just double check that I'm not even reading the x-coordinate so that's no good we need to go for the y-coordinate there we go so I'm reading the y-coordinate first make sure you don't get those mixed up y is equal to negative 1.2 there we go so y equals negative 1.2 and let's actually read the x-coordinate this time which means going up to the x-axis and again different scale there that looks like 2.8 to me so x equals 2.8. There we go, we can just fit that in. And there we go, there is our second solution. So in terms of actually solving uh, simultaneous equations graphically, this is how you'd go about that. And if you were given two linear equations, then you'd have to do what we did down here by drawing two tables, plotting them out really nicely, and obviously just giving the one coordinate where they intersect. But obviously we're looking at quadratics here, so something slightly different. So let's have a look at another question, and then there's going to be one for you to have a go at, and then we'll be done on this topic. Okay, so for this question here, something slightly different. So obviously do make some notes on this. Like again, it's going to be very difficult to draw this particular graph, but in terms of the bits of algebra that we're going to look, in, and look at in this question, it would be worth writing down the question and worth writing down part A here with our first equation, which we're going to read through, and part B with our second equation. Okay, so writing this down, making some notes on this, because you're going to have a go at this in a sec. So it says here the graph of y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2 is drawn on the grid. And again, we can see that. And again, we're we've given that as uh, it's been labelled on the graph there. So if we're going to actually go about this, just obviously read the question, make sure it is all labelled, make sure you know what you're looking at. So for part A here, it says use the graph to find estimates to the solution of the equation. And then it says x squared minus 4x plus 2 is equal to 4. So when it says this, this means that two equations have actually essentially been set equal to each other. And if you've done solving quadratic simultaneous equations, which again I'll link in the video, you'll know that when you have two equations, particularly when one's a quadratic and they're both y equals, you can set them equal to each other. So instead of this equaling 0, this time it equals 4. So if we were to split this up into two equations, so for part A here, we could say, okay, well, we've got the graph of y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2, which is matched on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side there, we have another equation, and that would just be y equals 4. Okay, and it's the same. Where does it equal 4? Okay, well, obviously, if you look at the original equation, y is at the start, and we're kind of saying, where does it equal 4 on the y-axis? So what we mean by that is we actually have to draw this graph of y equals 4. And if we go to y equals 4, which is on the y um, axis there, we're just going to draw that exact line. 
So the line y equals 4 is a horizontal line that just passes through every single point where y equals 4. And if we were to draw that in, I'm going to do it with a slightly dotted line to try and get it a bit straighter. Again, because you need to do this with a ruler and a pencil. But there we go, you want to draw a nice straight line across. And from that, we're just going to actually read the coordinates of intersection, where it crosses over, and that's going to be our estimates. So again, you want to read this nice and carefully. You know already that um, you know already that the y coordinates there are four, so we just want to give the x coordinates here. So the x coordinates, and again, we just want to read those nice and carefully because we're looking for the solutions to that equation. There we go. So we can go down, read them as carefully as we can, and it looks like on the graph there we have minus 0.5 in the middle and we have 4.5 just there. So for part A, we would say x equals negative 0.5 and the other one x is equal to 4.5. And there would be our solutions to that equation. They are the two numbers that you can substitute into that equation to get the answer for. Now again, you are just giving estimates, so as, as well, obviously you need to draw this as carefully as you can, but it might be that your numbers are just slightly different to mine. Maybe you've got minus 0 0.45 or you're trying to be really, really accurate with that. So you just need to be very, very careful, okay? Um, but that is how we're going to go about solving it. Now part B is a little bit more complicated, because if you look at this particular question, it doesn't match on the left and there's nothing on the right. So we're going to have to think about what's actually happened here. Now, what, what it, actually what's happened is it has been set equal to a, an equation, but it's been rearranged to make it equal zero. So what I mean by that is it could have been, let's just make it up, x squared minus 4x plus 2. Maybe they set it equal to, I don't know, let's go with 2x plus 3. Now, if it was equal to 2x plus 3, this would be the line that we'd have to draw. We'd have to plot the graph of 2x plus 3 and draw it onto our grid. But we don't know what it's equal to. But if it was equal to that, in order for them to make it equal 0, they would minus 2x from both sides and minus 3 from both sides. And if you did that, you would have x squared. If we minus 2x, we'd have minus 6x, which obviously doesn't equal what it is in the question. And if we took away 3, we would have minus 1. And that's how it would equal 0. So I could get rid of this part, and I could imagine that I'd given you that question, and you would have to find out what it is that I've taken away to make it equal zero. So we're gonna try and figure out how we can make the left-hand side say x squared minus four x plus two again. So that's the concept of what we have to do here, and this is where it does step up, and obviously this is the hardest type of question, in my opinion, that we're gonna be looking at. So let's have a look. Now we want it to say x squared minus four x plus two. So what would have to be on the other side? Well, at the moment, we've got minus 5x. So to get from minus 4x to minus 5x, we'd have to take away an x from both sides. So instead, let's add an x to both sides. So let's stick an x on the right. And if we were to get rid of that now, it would be minus 5x on the left. So that's the x part done. But we've also noticed there's no number in the equation there that's highlighted. And at the moment, we've got a 2. And so in order to get rid of that 2, we would have to take away 2 from both sides. So we need to put a 2 on the right, because then if we took away 2 from both sides, the number would disappear. And we can just test this out. So if I take away x from both sides, let's see if it matches what we've got in the question. We would have x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 2. That's a very bad 2 I was about to draw there. Let's get rid of that. Equals 2. And then for the final step, we take away 2 from both sides. And you probably can already see, hopefully, so we get x squared minus 5x equals 0, the 2's disappear. So that does match what we've got, so we are correct in saying that we need to draw the graph of x plus 2, or y equals x plus 2. So obviously you need to draw the graph of y equals x plus 2, and in order to do that you need to draw a little table. So again, up to you where you draw it, I'm just going to squeeze it in up here, I'm going to plot some x values, some y values, and let's just go with negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if it's x plus 2, negative 1 will equal 1, 0 will equal 2, and then we've got a pattern, it's going up in 2s, so 3, 5, 7. And again, you just need to plot that. So let's get rid of all this writing from part A, and let's have a go at just finishing off part B here. There we go. So, drawing this in, negative 1 was uh, at 1, 
which is just there, again being very careful of the axes. 0 was at 2, 1 was at 3, and you can probably see a pattern here, it starts to go up, let's cross two of those squares and up one, and we can extend that line, again you can do it with a ruler, and just be very careful when you join those up, and there we go, perfect. So this one here is actually quite nice because it does actually fall on whole number coordinates. So this one just here gives us um, x equals 0 and y equals, let's have a look, I can't see the number under there, I think it's 2, yeah, y equals 2. And for this one just here, we've got x equals, and again just trace your finger down, x equals 5, and y equals, trace your finger across, y equals 7. And there we go, there are two solutions. So obviously that one there, we were able to give whole numbers. Uh, again, if your line was quite difficult to draw, again, you would have to give estimates for that. But this one was quite nice, it gave us whole numbers. So that's how we're gonna approach these questions. That is probably one of the most difficult ones that you could probably do, um, because you actually had to rearrange the equation. The concept behind that is quite tricky. But I've got a question for you to have a go at. So you can have a go at this one. You can pause it, you can rewind it, you can have a little look, um, but here is one for you to have a go at. Now very quickly, before you do have a look at your question, it is worth noting that for this particular question, because those solutions there were whole numbers, you could have actually taken a slightly different approach, but it does say to use the graph. Now for the majority of these questions, they're not gonna go through whole numbers, so this was slightly unique, but I thought it was quite nice because it was easy for you to read. But of course, if you did wanna find the solutions to that equation, what you could do is factorize it and solve it. Of course, we wouldn't be using the graph, and for questions where we are finding estimates, of course, we wouldn't be able to do that on a non-calculator paper, but potentially, unless we were to give answers in third form and things like that, and potentially our solution Solution might take a little bit longer to find. Now for this particular one, I know we've given the x and the y coordinate, but in order to find the solution of the equation or the solutions of the equation, we actually have two solutions. Our answer would be x equals 5 and x equals 0. So when we're finding the solution to that equation, we are not finding the solution necessarily to the simultaneous equations, so you just need to be careful of the language. But there we go, let's have a look at your next question. Okay, so here's your question, so pause the video there, have a go at this one, trace it on the screen, move your equation around for part B, find as best estimates as you can, don't worry too much about drawing a perfect example for this or drawing the graph out, of course you can do, but this is just about you practicing for part A, where would you draw the line, which, which points would you need to read and just trace it with your finger, and for part B, how would you rearrange this equation to find which what the linear equation is that's been added into there to make it match the x squared minus 2x minus 3. So it's really more about the working out here than so much drawing it on the graph and actually finding those estimates, although we will go through the whole thing. So anyway, pause the video there. We'll give you the answer in a sec. Okay, so relatively quick on this one. So for part A, we need to draw y equals negative 2. So we're going to draw that through at negative 2. And we're going to read those x coordinates. So if we go up from this one, that lands on, looks like 2.45 or 2.5, so we would say x equals 2.5. And for the second one, we'll go up from there, and that's negative 0.5. So x equals negative 0.5. So that's part A, let's have a look at part B. So part B here obviously gives us an equation. We want it to match the x squared minus 2x minus 3. So how are we going to make it match that? Well, in order to get the minus x, we must, have, so we must have added x to both sides, which means there must have been a negative x. And we want to get minus 5. So in order to get the minus 5, we must have subtracted 2. So there must have been a plus 2 over here. And again, you can check that. If you add x to both sides, you get minus 1x on the left. And if you subtract 2 from both sides, you get negative 5 on the left. So it must have been negative x plus 2 that we drew. Now negative x plus 2 has a gradient of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 2. And again, you can draw the graph out for this if you like, or your little table of values in order to draw this perfectly. So it starts at a y-intercept of 2. Every one across, it goes down 1. So our next coordinate will be here. Across 1, cross 1, down 1 would be there, and here, and here. And we can go backwards in that same pattern. Again, 
being able to draw linear equations like that, which again is linked in the description, is a lot quicker than drawing out your table. Join that up as best you can with a ruler and a pencil. Again, I've missed one of the coordinates there, so you definitely need to do this with a ruler. And then read those solutions. So we have one solution over here, which is x equals, and again, yours might be different because you've obviously either had to trace this or you've not been able to draw this particular one. But again, we'll just read that coordinate. And that for me comes out as minus 1.8, x equals minus 1.8, and if we need the y coordinate there, we've got y is equal to 4. For the one down the bottom here, we have got x equals, and that is 2. Point, well, it looks like 2.75 on mine. It's probably 2. Point, probably 2.8 because my line there isn't particularly accurate. And we get a y coordinate of, and let's just think it's a little bit higher than that. So it's probably y equals minus 0.8. There we go, and there would be our solutions there. So again, there we go, that's how we solve them, that's how we draw our linear equations, and that's how obviously in this question here we look at extracting an equation from one that has been rearranged. So there we go, that is solving simultaneous equations graphically, and obviously you could have to draw two linear equations, which is obviously a little bit easier than what we've looked at here, and you would have to draw that table or apply the method that I used just here. So hopefully those ones would seem relatively easy now after looking at these particular questions, so we didn't really need to go over all of those, but as long as you understand you are finding the points where they intersect, and obviously we've explored some of the harder questions with quadratics, then you should be pretty well set on this topic. So don't forget to check any of the videos out in the description that are linked to this topic if any of that was a little bit too fast for you or you just want a little bit more revision on linear graphs as well. So hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment and please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help the channel and I really appreciate all of you for being subscribers. But as, there we go. On to, uh, until the next one, see you later.